Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from? Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Y'all encouraged? Yes, sir. I know y'all doing that. Y'all doing that. Um, moving up the ceiling thing, right? Never mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give me a second, Saints. That's making me come behind him. Are you serious? <laughs> wow. Ah, my, my. So much on our hearts and minds. So much on our hearts and minds today. Thank you, Father. Glory to the King. Yes, yes. All right. I had a few things on my heart as well. Um, and uh, when Pastor told me yesterday, he said, uh, you need to address the saints, Elder. I said, fine, like always. And, of course, I went to the Father and asked him what specifically did he want me to say. Because when you're striving, you got all kind of stuff on your mind all the time. And most of it is about you, you know. Most of it is about you and what you ain't doing and what you need to be doing and what you should be doing and what you can't do and what you think you can do but you already know you can't. You understand what I'm saying? That, that's what's on my mind. I don't know what's on yours, but that's what be on my mind. And it kept coming to me, do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember? We're going to start off in Amos 8 because all of us are familiar with the prophecy that I'm about to read. And, you know, getting on top of what Pastor just talked about, we got such a hard time receiving this word that that what we just heard was life changing yes. the words of Paul are extremely life changing but it's very hard for you to understand it pastor was correct I don't know how many times I done read it way more than a hundred times in Galatians but I ain't never read it like that I ain't never understood it like that so when we get this word we got to put ourselves in a position for it to actually change us, for our mind to be able to be renewed. But when we read the prophecy in Amos here, I'm going to go to Amos 8, and I'm going to read it, uh, verses 11 and 12. It says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh Elohim, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Yahweh. And they shall wander from sea to sea. And from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro. To seek the word of Yahweh. And shall not find it. Now I'm reading this. And I'm meditating on it. And it's bringing so much clarity and understanding. Because Pastor talked about it. He had a clip up there that talked about correction constantly being needed. Well, why is it needed? Well, there's a famine. <laughs> we have a very hard time hearing this word. 
we got so many distractions in our mind. And we've never truly strived to enter into the rest that we've been commanded to enter into. So even here on the Shabbat, well, we should be resting in the Most High Yah. So if you're really doing that, it should be easy to receive this word because you're getting the nutrients that you need. You're getting the life substance that you need to grow. But what if it's not your desire to grow, though? So what are you getting? Now, we do this thing in Georgia. Father put it on my heart when the community started. Call it Q&A. And it started off with the intent of us being close-knit family, uh, having an opportunity to come together every Shabbat, ask questions, and get answers to these questions. What it has turned into <laughs> is ask Elder Rufus. <laughs> and I, and I, I give the ground rules for Q&A all the time. And like we do, we subvert the information and the instruction, and we find a way to get what we want. So when Q&A come up, I like the floors open, saints. This is what I get. Floors open, saints. Now what you haven't seen is before we pray, because we follow the same manners as here. We pray before service. But we have time before prayer starts where we can fellowship, right? Then you got a little downtime after the message. You know, some are getting delivered, some are getting healing, some are just sitting there fellowshipping. So in these times is when they, hey, hey, Elder, I got a question for you. Hey, 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 Elder, what you think about this? And hey, hey, Elder. And I'm just sitting there like, mm, I see what's going on. You got all these things going on inside your heart that you really don't want to deal with. And see, the reason that we have Q&A is so that it can be put out front. See, who could hide from the message we just heard here today? Pastor didn't have to come to each one of you individually and give you this. You know what I mean? Like he said, I see your faces. I know I'm soft. All you look like, you just swallowed a bunch of it. Every time I'm up here, that's what he's saying. I see the same thing when I'm addressing the saints in Georgia. But they will come to me individually trying to subvert and trying to, you know, find a different way. Instead of just dealing with yourself. Instead of just looking at yourself honestly. So what the Father put on my heart, and I'm going to read this. And what we're going to do, I brought the Q&A up because we're going to do that here today. All right? We're just going to do it differently. Y'all ain't finna ask Elder Rufus no questions, all right? Because <laughs> I ain't got no answers for you. The book do. I ain't got no answers for you. But we're going to do it kind of backwards. I'm going to do all the asking of the questions, okay? Now I got 10 of them. And I'm not going to require any answers from anybody, okay? You can go to your closet. You can go to your private time. And you can meditate on these questions. Because just like we saw in a common scripture, a common text. Galatians is a common text. I know everybody in here done read that many times. But we've never heard it like that. I'm going to go to something that's common. Well, it should be common to you. Okay? And as I go through it, I'm going to ask questions as I go through it. And you take these questions. Some of you scholarly, you can write it down. It's up to you. But faith comes by. And hearing what? All right, but we got a what going on in the land today? Now, how do we get past that then? How do we get past the famine? How do we even recognize? Now, these ain't the 10 questions. I may have 25 questions in, I guess. These ain't the 10. I'm just asking some more questions. But how do we get past that? How do you even recognize if you are participating willingly in the famine? You got to ask yourself this type of stuff. Is the word having an effect on my life where it's constantly bringing about change in me? Do I fast? Do I pray? Do I meditate? Do I immerse myself? These are words we hear all the time. What is the answer to these questions, though? 
And are you lying to Yah? Are you trying to deceive Yah with the answers when they pertain to you? You know, pastors and ministers get up here, look to your left, look to your right, look around. Look at yourself. Look at you. Look at you. Don't worry about what's going on to the right or to the left because you can't do nothing for them no ways. You're going to either hinder them or be a good example for them to follow. That's it. So if you keep striving, you got nothing to worry about. Then if they don't follow your lead, that's on them. We understand? All right, we're going to go to Psalms. And we're going to read the, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way. We're going to read 78th Psalm, okay? A little lengthy, but I'll get through it. And again, I'm giving you the pre-information. If you want to write this down, I don't know if it's being recorded or not. You can see it later. But I'm going to read the 78th Psalm. And as I read it, I'm going to insert these questions that we need to have on our mind. Hallelujah. Or the king. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open up my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. Will we not hide them from their children? Showing to the generations to come the praises of the master and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. Question number one. Do your children know the praises, the strength, and the wonderful works that Yah has done for his people? For he has established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generations to come might know them. Even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in Yah and not forget the works of God, of Yah, but keep his commandments. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with Yah. Let's define steadfast. That's Hebrew 539. It means to support, to confirm, to be faithful, uphold, to nourish. Question number two. Is your spirit steadfast in Yah? Hallelujah. The children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of Yahweh and refused to walk in his law and forgot his works and his wonders that he had shown them. Marvelous things he did in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through and he made the waters to stand as and heap. Before I go further, question number three. Do you keep the covenant of Yah and walk in his laws? Do you keep them? Hallelujah. I think we're at verse 14. In the daytime also he led them with a cloud, and all the night with a light of fire. He cleaved the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of the great depths. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. 
and they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted Yah in their hearts by asking meat for their lust. Question number four. Do you tempt Yah in your heart with the things you think? Do you tempt Yah in your heart with the things you think? Hallelujah. Hmm. And, yea, they spank against Yah. They said, can Yah furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the stream overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? These are all questions in the heart. Mm. Therefore, Yahweh heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also came up against Israel because they believed not in Yah and trusted not in his salvation. So he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and he and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels' food. He set them meat to be full. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power, he brought in the south wind. He rained fresh also upon them as dust, and feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea. Listen, saints, pay attention. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp, round about their habitations. So they did eat and were well filled, for he gave them their own desires. They were not estranged from their lust. But while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of Yah came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. And some of you, when you hear that, you will think, Elders and pastors and all that. That's not what that's talking about, though. It's literally talking about the young men. That's what it's talking about. For all this, they sinned still and believe not for his wondrous works. Question number five Are you continuing in sin? Are you continuing in sin? Therefore, their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, then they sought him and they returned and inquired early after Yah. And they remembered that Yah was their rock and the high Yah their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouths and they lied unto him with their tongues. Question number six. Do you flatter with your mouth? And do you lie with your tongue to Yah? Do you flatter with your mouth and lie with your tongue unto Yah? For their hearts was not right with him. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. Thank you, Yah. Hallelujah. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away. And cometh not again. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness. And grieve him in the desert. Yea they turned back and tempted Yah. And limited the Holy One of Israel. Number seven. 
do you limit the power of Yah? They remember not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zon, and had turned their rivers into blood and their floods that they, can, they could not drink. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs which destroyed them. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar, and their labor unto the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail, and the sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to the hail, and their flocks to hot thunder bolts. He cast, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to the pestilence, and smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the chief of their strength in the tabernacle of Ham. Number eight, are you cursed of Yahweh because of your disobedience? Are you cursed of Yahweh because of your disobedience? Verse 52, but made his own people to go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. And he led them on safely so that they feared not, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. And he brought them to the border of his sanctuary, even to his mountain, which, is, which his right hand had purchased. He cast out the heathen also before them and divided them an, an inheritance by line and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. Yet they tempted and provoked the Most High Yah and kept not his testimonies, but turned back and dealt unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. Hmm. When Yah heard this, he was wroth and greatly abhorred Israel. Let's look at that word abhorred. That's Hebrew 39, 88. That means Yah rejected us. He despised us. And he refused us. Question number, number nine. Are you still tempting, provoking Yah? With your unfaithfulness? Are you still tempting or provoking Yah with your unfaithfulness? Mm. So that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among men, and delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. He gave his people over also unto the sword, and was wroth with his inheritance. The fire consumed their young men. And their maidens were not given to marriage. Their priests fell by the sword, and their widows made no lamentations. Then the master awakened as one out of sleep, and like a mighty man that shouted by reason of wine, and he smote his enemies in the hinder hinder parts. He put them to a perpetual reproach. Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion, which he loved. Now, saints and all that, he still chose Judah. <laughs> it just, it baffles me. It really does. And he built a sanctuary like high places, palaces, like the earth which he hath established forever. He chose David also, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the ewes, great with young, 
he brought him to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he fed them accordingly to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Now when you read this, you think, and I'm going back to the message pastor just gave, and he started off by asking, or putting the word up there, impeccable. And here we are reading here about this beautiful Yah that we have put through the ringer with our rebellion, our disobedience, our unfaithfulness, our unforgiveness, our doubt, everything. And he still chose Judah. And he still put a righteous example before us and showed us that according to the integrity of his heart. See, he cannot break covenant. <laughs> if he said it, he has to do it. And he still showed mercy and compassion towards us. In this hour, Question number 10. Have you been chosen by Yah? Are you Judah? The one that is beloved Mount Zion of Yahweh. Hmm. Are you Judah? Are you chosen? Because if you are, we better start learning how to strive. And walk impeccably. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless y'all saints. Magnificent and wonderful name. Shalom. Uh-oh. Look at him looking.